ever wondered how the rarest toys and collectibles are found? How the most elusive treasures are discovered and brought to light? Let's embark on a journey, the journey of the Havens family. Michael and Andrea Havens, originally from Torrington, Connecticut, found their home in Nashville, Tennessee, two decades ago. A love for collecting rare toys, an interest shared and cherished, bloomed into something far greater than a simple pastime. It became a passion, a pursuit, a profession. Over time, they developed a network of 27 prime Facebook groups about collectibles, known as the IC. These groups became a hub for enthusiasts, a place where people could share their finds, their treasures, their stories. But that was just the beginning. The Havens then embarked on a grander venture, ICC Con, a convention without corporations, just fans. It grew to become the largest collectible convention in the world, a mecca for collectors, a haven for movie stars, and a beacon for those in search of the rare and unique. Then Andrea created IC Toys Nashville, the premier toy and collectible store in Nashville, a place where the tangible magic of the collectible world could be touched, held, owned. Now the Havens family is bringing you the International Collectibles Roadshow. This not just an event, but an adventure. It is a quest that will take Mike and Andrea across the globe in search of the world's rarest toys and collectibles. The Haven's journey is a testament to the power of passion, the thrill of the chase, and the joy of discovery. Their adventures in the world of collectibles are nothing short of remarkable. From developing a vibrant online community of collectors to establishing the world's largest collectible convention full of movie stars, and the premier collectible store in Nashville. Now, they invite you to join them on their latest adventure, the International Collectibles Roadshow. The International Collectibles Roadshow is a celebration of the world of collectibles, a journey of discovery, and a testament to the Haven's dedication and passion. It's more than just a show, it's an experience, an experience of the thrill, the chase, the discovery, and it's an invitation, an invitation to join the Havens on their lifelong journey of uncovering the world's rarest toys and collectibles. So are you ready to start the journey? The world of International Collectibles Roadshow awaits. Tickets are free but extremely limited, so please get yours today. Each ICRS ticket comes with two free ICRS professional appraisals that can be submitted to your insurance company to cover your prized possessions. So bring your rare toys and maybe you will be featured on the next IC Roadshow. We are in Torrington, Connecticut. This is the school I went to grade school. This is St. Peter's Church that we're looking at right now. We're going to go look at the little teeny tiny school I came from. Uh, there were 110 kids in my uh, final final year there. There were 12 kids in my graduating class, and now it is merged with uh, St. Francis School down the street. So there's numerous kids now, but um, this is St. Peter's School, and that's, that's the whole school right there, first grade through eighth grade, and that's where I started. This is my school. This is Southwest School. And when I went there, there wasn't any of these buildings on the right here. It was just this one big main building. I believe there's a total of 12 classrooms. <laughs> it's very tiny. That's the Torrington Library. That's like it's the most paper. famous building in town. This is uh, East Main Street. Looks a lot different than when we were there, right? Oh, East Main, main Street. Street. Well, see, Andrea knows. <laughs> Yes, uh, the Warner. I actually did all my some of my dance recitals there at the Warner. Many shows there. I've seen some shows at the Warner. I've yeah. never been in any of the shows at the Warner. It's nice that Torrington has uh, revitalized itself so much with all these new businesses and stuff. Yeah, those, that's the Mertz building that just passed. There's all new shops and restaurants and everything in there. Um, that's uh, Town Hall coming up there. City, City Hall. Hall. City Hall, yeah. City Hall right there, and yeah. I remember when Torrington from overseas, I think it was Torrington, England, came over and they gave him a key to the city. That was Did city. they really? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Uh, I don't remember that. That's St. Francis Church, where uh, my school merged with. This is uh, the historical building that I've never been in, ever. Have you been in there? <laughs> I haven't. I've only been into the And back. that's the Torrington Museum right there. I've never been in there either. Yep. There you go. <laughs> and this is? The Fraternal Order of the Eagles. Yeah, that's where we have IC Roadshow. So let's... Uh, 
get in there and let's let's see if there's some cool stuff that people brought it is freezing cold outside it's cold you can see all the snow oh here we're not done yet we have uh this you remember where this is this is blockbuster video blockbuster video this is where it all began um i met my wonderful lovely wife she was restocking a shelf full of the new releases i happen to be working at that same blockbuster video in torrington connecticut we became fast friends and hung out, and then we started going out. And uh, where did it go from there, dear? We started dating and then moved down to Nashville. Yeah, we moved down to Nashville. Yep. And that was the start of something incredible. Crazy. So yeah. I highly suggest it. If you don't know where you're going, go someplace. <laughs> it worked for us. It did. All right. Without further ado, here is IC Roadshow. Welcome to the very first IC Roadshow. That's the International Collectible Roadshow, where my wife Andrea and I travel around the world and find awesome toys. My name's Michael Havens, and I run the Imperial Commissary and ICCCon with my wife... Andrea Havens. And what do you run? I run IC Toys Nashville. There you go. The, what, what's IC Toys? It's a toys? toy store in you gotta, Nashville. You got to tell the people <laughs> what it is. But uh, yeah, we're going to come to you with a brand new IC Roadshow. This is the pilot. So please give it a like, subscribe, share, and uh, make sure you tell your friends that IC Roadshow could be coming to a town near you. Make sure to go to theicrs.com to sign up your town, and maybe we'll come to your town next. What do you think? We hope to see you soon. Andrea likes to travel everywhere. So. I do like to travel. All right. We'll see you then. Here comes our one wonderful MC Kevin Lyme he has been with us for a long time he actually MCs at ICCCon he's interviewed hundreds of movie stars I think he's up to 91 Star Wars 91, stars. 91. Yeah. that's something else um, but that's we've known him since what 2018 2008 2017 2018 17, yeah. what happened is we decided to throw a convention in our hometown <laughs> uh, for some reason right yeah, yeah. Which is crazy yeah <laughs> and uh, he said hey I've MCed a whole bunch of movie stars would you like some help on the stage and we said absolutely, absolutely. And he's been with us ever since. So a big shout out and thank you to Kevin Lyle, Norse Legion. And uh, he's a great guy. And here comes the show. So here. Enjoy. Enjoy. So welcome to the IC uh, Roadshow. This is actually our first interview we're doing today. And so I'm really excited to see what you got here. So, how you, so who do I have here first? Paul Di Maria and my wife Maria. Okay, how you guys? And are you guys, uh, where are you guys from? Right here in Torrington. Okay, cool. Neat little town. I've never been here before. Yeah. But boy, is it, I'm enjoying it. So what do we have here? So we have some items that you brought to have Mike look at. And he, uh, which of the three of these is your yes. favorite? Uh, well, favorites for different reasons. Uh, this, a very good friend gave this to us uh, recently. Um, and these are just uh, slot cars that, you know, I collected and played with slot cars as a kid, and then now, as an old person, I'm getting back into it, and I've acquired these, so. Okay, cool. I see you got a charge. I see you have a charger there. Is that a 69, 69 or 70? 69 Dodge Charger, yep. 69 Dodge Charger. And then, oh, uh, Ford GT. 68 was my favorite. That's a great car. Bullet. Excellent. So, let's see what, uh, so we had Mike look at these. <clears throat> the price here, so the uh, 1950s tin car. Japanese right. tin Lido car, and he the valuation is a hundred dollars. Wow. So wow, that's pretty good. Did you expect it to be that much? Uh, no, uh, like I said, a friend uh, found it in a local, you know, what I would call a junk shop, and just picked it up for me because uh, that's what we do for for each other. So um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a little surprised. Okay, cool. And the next one is the uh, the Aurora GT slot car, which is the racing car we have right here. That's great. Yeah. And that's being valued at 175. Wow! That's I know that cool. even the uh, original cubes add to the value. Uh, there's an original Caldor's receipt here from uh, 1970. Oh, that's interesting. And then some of the original little maintenance paperwork uh, that came in the package. Two dollars and thirty-nine cents. Yeah. Interesting. Buy a lot of them for that. Okay, and the final one is the one I like the most. Is the, oh, it's his 1970 Aurora Charger. So that came in at, uh, at 250. Actually, that's a great. I like it. The Charger, for some reason, is a very desirable slot car. Oh, it's so, a beautiful car. Yeah. You ever see Bullet? Oh yeah. Of oh, course. Yeah, that's a great. That's a good. That's a that's a great movie. Well, uh, I want to thank you very much uh, both for coming, and uh, and have a good day. Well, thank you. It was a great experience.
Welcome back to the IC Roadshow. Uh, good evening, ladies, or good afternoon, I should say. How are you guys doing? Okay, and uh, can, you can uh, pick up your mic right there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. And who do I have the pleasure of talking with? I'm Lee. I'm You're Lee. Lee. Lee and you, <laughs> Lee Jeans. Lee Jeans. Oh, that's that's hilarious. That's yeah. pretty funny. I'm wearing Lee Jeans right now. That's pretty uh, cool. Boy, that sounded odd. But um, so you got some uh, you got some great stuff. Um, I'm already confused. Which one to use, Lee? Which one to use, Gene? I'm You're Lee. Lee. Okay, Lee. You okay. All right. <laughs> so Lee, I'm going to start with you. You've got some uh, pretty cool things right here. Um, this first thing, I, I love this, this, this pewter A-wing. Where'd you, uh, where'd you get it? Where'd you get the, uh, where'd you get the A-wing from? We were down at the Cape shopping, and there was a little toy store there, and we went in, and I saw that, and I said, that's adorable, I'm going to buy it. And so I did. It is pretty cute. What'd you get it for, do you remember? I think about 20 bucks. Oh, wow. Well, uh, Mike's appraised it at 70, so uh, that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good steal, if I can use that word. Yeah. And then uh, the second item that you have, I, I love this. I had one of these when I was a kid, the uh, Darth Vader case. And yours has figures, and we have some photos yes. to go along with that of what's in, inside there. That's from 77 to 86, the figures you have there, various figures. Um, where'd, you get, where'd you get that at? I bought it at an auction, and I bought it for my nephews, and they didn't want it, so I kept it. <laughs> when you bought it, did it have the figures in them? Yes. Okay, that's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And the uh, the price going for that is $150. So is that much more than you paid for at the auction? Uh, I don't really remember. Let's pretend. It, it Let's was... pretend it was like $25 and you you made a great investment. <laughs> that's what I do. Sounds good to me, it right? It was 30 years ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, so you've been sitting there for a long time. Do you want to sell it? Uh, probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. Am I allowed to buy these good. things? I would totally do that. I would totally buy that because I had one as a kid, and I don't know what happened to it. I, my parents probably threw it out, but I've always been wanting to get another one. I need to go to the auction you went to. Pardon me? I need to go to the auction that you went to. I, I, I missed out. <laughs> well, I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> I find some good stuff. <laughs> okay, and Jean, we have, uh, we have some items here for you, too. We have, uh, yeah. let's go with the 1975 Lego forklift 425. Unopened? Unop it's not opened. Unopened. Oh, can I see that? Sure. Oh, wow, it's unopened. Open, open, open. Oh, that makes it, uh, how long have you had this? Um, they made it for three years. I found it at that. a tag sale. And you probably got it for pennies, right? Uh, well, not pennies, but, um, Dollars? The dollars, dollars, yeah, okay. but not a ton of dollars. <laughs> wow, that's great. Do we know what year it's from? 75. 1975. 1975, which, yes. which I just said minutes ago. Yes. But anyway, it's still yeah. from 1975. It's, it still, it's, still, it's still from 1975. <laughs> that is, that is still... Uh, uh, 49 years ago. And okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So um, Mike's had a look at it, and the retail value of it is $450. That is more so than that's, I expected. That's, that's the highest we've had yet today. Not, not bad for a $15 investment. I do remember what I paid for that. Okay, yes. $15 not, investment. Not that, bad. That, that's pretty good. Uh, and I'm, the second, I'm happy. And the second thing you have is they're real tiny, but they're real cool. Who doesn't like Star Trek? So that's that you have the, uh, the, the, the phaser from the original series. And the communicator from the sixties. And, and there's oh, that's 1968. Wow. Yeah, it's those look really good. And it says um, uh, tie tack and communicator pin. Yeah, that's the, the, the tie communicator has a little clip that until uh, it was pointed out to me today, I was not even aware of. It has a little clip on the side there. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that well, was a, a great surprise find. to me. I didn't even notice that. And and where did you get these? These were from a relative who got them way back in the sixties. Oh, so I'm like an original Star Trek fan. Yes, an original Star Trek fan, and they've just you know I've held on to them since then. So they're you know from that time period. I didn't purchase them. Okay. The, uh, the well the IC Roadshow is uh, estimating them at seventy five dollars. For the set, for the, I think. The set? I okay. think that's great. No, those are cool. That's well, well, those are, I love all things as, like that. As I came across, I have three sets. Uh huh. So three sets times. Yeah. You have three so, sets of that. Yes. Oh, so you have two others. Yes. Oh, can I have that one? In my back pocket. Can I have that one? <laughs> you can have? No, you can't have anything. Right. Now that we know the value. <laughs> all right, great. Well, thank you very much for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. All right. Yes. Bye now. Over to the IC Roadshow again. So I'm sitting here with uh, Mark, right? Mark. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, has anyone ever said you look like another Mark, a famous Mark? Well, I have gotten it once in a while. Oh, so I'm not wrong? No, not wrong. No, Mark okay. Rosenberg, they say. Mark Rosenberg, yeah. not Mark Hamill. He's not real famous, I guess. <laughs>
I just thought it was an interesting thing. So what do we have here? So we have um, what is it? Is this like um, almost reminds me of um, of um, Uncle Sam, but it's not, right? Well, it is Uncle Sam. It is okay. And um, so I know this to be what's called a Grisbaum Whistler. Grisbaum and these were made in Germany. Um, you would think about this much the way you'd think about a cuckoo clock, except it doesn't tell time. Okay. Um, it is an automaton. It, it has movement inside of it that you wind up and okay. turn it on, and, and um, he will. It, unfortunately, the insides are in New Jersey right now being professionally restored. You're restoring it right now. I've been waiting 50 years to restore this, and I've had the restorer on the line for three years in total trying to get him to accept the project. And I'm on the verge of getting it back, but it's not back in time for this. So No, well, maybe we, maybe we can have you come back at a subsequent show. It I'd would, love to, it I'd would really be cool to show it in its working order. When I was a kid, this did operate, and um, even, even when it was not fully operational, it operated mechanically, and the whistling was was uh, not correct because the bellows were ripped. So you get this very unusual sort of whistling from. A and what does this whistler do? You know, there's all kinds of whistlers. There's kind of ones that on old trains. There's one for dogs. What what does this so, whistler so do? So these are musical. These have programmed tunes in in them, and programmed is probably the wrong word, but um, each movement would have a unique song attached to it. This one is Yankee Doodle Dandy. Okay. Not surprising, perhaps. And so in the 1940s, the Germans made something with Uncle Sam singing Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah. yeah, it yeah, must have exactly. been like it must have been 46 or 47. Yeah, <laughs> well, and and so there are, to my knowledge, there are probably as many as a hundred different tunes, and maybe not as many carved figures. Um, this one I have never been able to find uh, a picture of the exact one, um, and I, you know. By virtue of that, I, I'm thinking it's somewhat unusual. Yeah, no, it's pretty pretty. How long, how long did you say it was till you can fix it? So I, I expect it was promised back to me at the end of January, and here we are at the end of middle February. of February. Middle yeah. of February. End, end of February. So, yeah. yeah. So maybe it's possible that you can get it fixed in the next couple of weeks and maybe send us a little bit of a video. We can add that with this. I would say, given the amount of time that. Um, He's had these pieces. I'd say it's pretty unlikely. I, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be several months yet. But okay, well we'll see. Yeah. But uh, so uh, we're looking at it. Uh, the value of it as it stands right now is about four hundred dollars. But if you were able to get the whistler to fix, get yeah. it get it operational, we're thinking it's upwards of fifteen hundred. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that's really cool. Um, it has a really unique story. This was gifted to my father by uh, General Bill Donovan. Oh really? Oh really? So the uh, World War he's a World War II general, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. And so uh, my father was recruited by Bill Donovan as a civilian uh, into the OSS. Kind of cool. Wow, really? Which is the pre precursor of the CIA? Exactly. Yeah. So he he was a radio operator. My dad uh, did code, and um, was requested to decode a message. This was in England. Uh, in the middle of the night, he went and uh, decoded. Just for context, was, was this before the war ended, or this is during the this war? During is the war? High, high war time. This okay. is during the war, and and you know, you, curiously, my dad is a civilian still at the time in the OSS. He has no military rank, um, and so he decodes this message, and and Donovan says to him, you know, I I want to gift you something, and so they look around his flat, and. Uh, came up with this. Wow. Well, that was pretty cool. Well, yeah. I, I hope you can get it working again. I hope we can hear from you, yeah. you know, maybe to hear the conclusion of this story. But we do have two other items here. Yeah. What can you, uh, what can you tell me about these? <laughs> I can tell you my mother told me they were valuable, and um, I was always suspect. Um, they don't strike me as particularly well-made, um, uh, but I don't want to put them in a tag sale $20. No, 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 uh, no. If they're not worthy of uh, a quick sale. Right, right, right. Well, they're they're called they're they're, they're Chinese uh, Dequin Changzi Dynasty vases. 
Vases? Is it vase or vases? <laughs> you think working for the show, you think I'd know. But anyway, I think there's a chewy what do you say? That, uh, that resolves that. Uh, I would say vase. Vase? I, yeah. I think I say vase. Yeah, I think we say vase here. You're from Connecticut, right? You from, I am, yeah. Where are you from exactly? Well, I, I grew up in Wilton and I live in New Melford. Oh, I grew up in New Canaan. Very good. Okay, excellent. Go Rams. Anyway, so, uh, well, we value this at um, anywhere between uh, 425 and 525 wow. is the value of that. So, wow, um, that's, so that's, definitely don't sell the tag sale for 20 bucks. Yeah, I'm, I, that's pretty incredible. Okay. That's cool. I, I, hope, I hope I can look some of that up because I, I had no luck with these trying to figure them out. So that's, that's very cool. Yeah, no, no, Mike's a, Mike's a pretty good, uh, he's a pretty good investigator. That's why I work for him. I get it. Cool. But, all right, well, thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Have you ever considered how a simple object, a collectible, can hold a world of stories, emotions, and memories? How it can connect us to our past, to the people we love, and to communities that share our passions? In the grand scheme of the universe, these objects might seem insignificant, but to those who collect, they are a piece of their soul, a tangible expression of their journey. In the heart of the Imperial Commissary, there's a unique initiative that understands this profound connection. It's called IC4 Life, and its mission is not just to preserve these collections, but also to honor the legacy of the collectors who have left us. You see, IC4 Life isn't about cold, impersonal transactions. It's about the warmth of memories, the honor of legacy, and the resonance of a collector's passion echoing beyond their time. It's about walking with you through the emotional journey of parting with a loved one's collection, offering a shoulder to lean on and a hand to guide you. Our team at IC4 Life is more than just a group of experts. They are passionate individuals who speak the language of fandom, understand the rhythm of collecting, and will handle your loved one's collection with the respect it deserves. But it doesn't stop there. IC4 Life organizes memorial auctions that are far removed from impersonal online listings. These are dedicated events that celebrate your loved one's passion, narrate their story, and share their legacy through the objects they cherished. And the most beautiful part? The proceeds from these auctions go to your family, that then gives a tax-deductible donation to IC4 Life. Those donations are channeled towards fueling the future of collecting. They fund educational programs, public outreach initiatives, and help build the future home of the IC4 Life Museum and Convention Center. How you doing? I'm uh, I'm here with uh, Raymond. Uh, Raymond, where are you from? Well, that's not a hard question. It's not a hard question. Real, no. it's a real I was easy one. Uh, born born in Bridgeport, raised in Fairfield, moved to New Mexico, and now I'm back living in Torrington again, after a couple of months. Okay. So I'm a replanted native. A replanted native. Replanted native. There you go. That's why I was wondering. I was wondering why I was going to. So what do we uh, what do we have here? Well, I've got a box of uh, Nabisco Classic Monsters cookies that has not been opened yet. I'm kind of afraid to even try with it. an incredible amount of dust on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, They've uh, been in storage for a long time. Universal Studios Monster Cookies. I, I, I have a friend that would love these. This is, this is great. When I found those at the grocery store, there was one left. So the manager gave me the phone number of the distributor in town. He had two cases left. Okay. So I raced down there and bought both cases and ate all but one box. You ate all but one box. How did they taste? They were amazing. You know, kind of like Oreo without the stuff inside. You get the okay. chocolatey. So they're more healthy, stuff. healthy Oreos. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Well, that's great. So uh, we've, we've had our, our people look at it, and it's, uh, so it's a 1998 box of Monster Cookies for Universal, and the, uh, the price goes from 30 to 45 Oh wow! What they're looking for it. So that's um. That's, that's not not, not bad. I got them at wholesale for like less than a buck a box. Yeah, so a buck a box. So yeah, there you go. So there's some forty. But I think it's really cool. But what I really want to see is what you have here at the end. Ah. So I, I take it. Are you a, a Universal fan? Is that like your thing? I am. Uh, Universal Monsters is one half of my collection. Then the Aurora Model Company is the other half of my collection. Okay. So. But I'm having to thin out one or the other of the groups. So I said, well, the monsters aren't going anywhere. Keep them the Aurora stuff. 
Mm -hmm. So I can start thinning out some of the monster. I, uh, I love those movies when I when I was a kid because they were they were on TV all the time during Halloween and stuff like that. They're great. So so what exactly do we have here? We have the a Universal Monster Pack of Three. See, so this came out when the post office had the classic monsters stamps. Um, they got Frankenstein, Wolfman, and the Mummy. So flap opens up. We've got like GI Joe oh, wow. style, you know, action dolls of the monsters. Mm -hmm. um, and what year? What year was this? I think it was 2097 97? when the uh, when the when the stamps came out. Okay. And there was a big resurgence of the monsters during that time, and I've got pencils, pens, all kinds of other clips that came with the stamps, as well as two books of stamps that are framed at home. Okay, cool. So, but these were these were a lot of fun. Do you remember what you bought it for? Oh, what I bought it for? No, bought it for the oh, price. Oh, for. I, I know what you bought it for. You bought yeah, it because you're, you're a collector. <laughs> but the, the price, I think it's even might even still be on here someplace, if I remember right. Or maybe not. But they how about, were how about right, right, right there with the barcode. Oh, you can, can you read that? I can read it, but there's no price there. No price there. Just okay. for purchase. Yeah. But anyway, they were available only through the post office. And when they came out, you know, I was living in Albuquerque at the time. I went to every post office in town. It's upside down trying to find more of these, mm -hmm. and I couldn't. There was only one office that had these, so I grabbed them as soon as I found them. So that's something that, you know, you can close that. Yeah. I have I have not seen since. No, it's really cool. So uh, well, we have the estimated value we have from is between 110 and 150. Oh, that's wow. what you'd want to insure it at, at 150. About 150, that's much more than what I paid for. I can okay. tell you that. Well, there you go. All right, well, thanks a lot for coming by. Well, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Welcome to IC Toys. Hey, I had some old stuff sitting around. You guys buy this sort of thing? We do. No collection too big or too small. We buy it all. You have some really great things here. We can offer you $10,000 for this. $10,000? Stop by and see us. IC Toys Nashville. No collection too big or too small. All right, welcome back to the IC Roadshow, and I am here with, what's your name, sir? Paul. Paul, how you doing? My name's Kevin. Very good. Where Kevin. are you from, Paul? I'm right from Torrington here. Right from Torrington. What a coincidence. And here <laughs> we are. So I've been, I've been doing this all day long, and to be honest, I've really, really, really been looking forward to seeing your stuff, because you, you got my absolute favorite toy as a kid, Darth Vader with the Darth Vader TIE Fighter. So, uh, what, so what, can you talk about this? Where did you, where'd you uh, get this collection? Well, the collection is really from uh, my children, two boys. One's 50 now, and one's 47. Okay, so they were, they were Star four Wars. or three years old when Star right. Wars came out. Okay, And so they, uh, the, especially the older one, was really interested in Star Wars. So we started to collect this different stuff. They played with it constantly. And uh, now that they're older, all of a sudden, they aren't that interested. <laughs> and it stays with mom and dad. So if I, I, I got rid of mine like 40 years ago, and I feel terrible about it. I, I would love to have kept mine. But uh, it looks great. It's in really good condition, you know, a little, little bubbling. But uh, so we're estimating that uh, the, the value of it is between uh, 85 and 110. If it's, if it's Darth Vader, I, I actually have Darth Vader's jacket back there. So I'm, I'm a big Darth Vader fan. But uh, what other items do we have? We have a, um, a Cabbage Patch Kids doll. I don't know anything about Cabbage Patch. Uh, so that must be that thing on the end that I don't yes. recognize. The Cabbage Patch craze occurred around um, that same time yeah early 80s very hard to get and so uh, i was fortunate i had a brother who worked for what was called caldors at the time which caldors yeah, yeah, yeah. Store. where was it which caldors it was here in torrington there's one up here okay and we uh one day he said if you want any of those maybe i can pull two aside if we get any in and he did and we ended up with two i, re I remember that i was like 10 years old when that happened and they had like People char charging stores, right? And waiting was, in lines. And yeah, it was just it was just uh, the fighting and stuff like that. Well, the one we have here, we're estimating between uh, sixty-five and eighty-five dollars oh for that goodness. one you have right there. And then uh, you've got the largest collection, I think, out of anybody we have here. What else we got here? Got the Kenner X-wing, and is that uh, that's a vintage nineteen eighty? That's a nineteen eighty uh, X-wing. It's uh, missing the canopy, but otherwise, it's in pretty good condition. Right. I almost think we might have the canopy at home somewhere, but I just. I guess I didn't notice it when we were coming. Are we allowed to ask Mike questions while we're filming? Hey, Mike, if he found this canopy, what would the value raise be for that? Okay, so we're, 
We're estimating it at about $100 as is. And if you were to get the, uh, the canopy for it, you can be looking at another 50 bucks. So it would be 150 Wow. So it would be worthwhile to, to, to dig around for a little while. So Wait till I tell my sons about this. Need to know. Uh, where are we now? So we have a Darth Vader case with figures. These are very popular. These have been around. I had one as a kid as myself and, again, lost it. But, uh, and you have, a lot of, uh, you have a lot of great figures in here. You got your Boba Fett. Yep. That's pretty cool. Let's see what we got here. Um, the case with the figures, which is in pretty fair condition, is uh, estimated between eighty and hundred dollars. So, what else do we have? And this is uh, this is something you don't see very often. Is well, there's a lot of Millennium Falcons you see out there, but not in that condition. You, it looks really good, and uh, it's estimated at three hundred and fifty dollars. My goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> and then moving right along. The last thing is the um, the Kenner Star Wars Yoda. Where is where is that? Do I see that it's here? inside here? This Yoda alone? Oh oh, he's he's got uh, he's got his cane and his belt. He doesn't have his his snake though, but uh, he's still pretty complete. He looks really good. Good. See, one of the things you want to look at is the um, the eyes look pretty good. The paint's mm. not chipped. This has obviously probably been sitting safely in this drawer oh, somewhere yeah. for like it, forty years. It's probably been in there the whole time. And it is estimated that the value is between seventy and a hundred dollars, just for that. My goodness! There you go. This is amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, uh, well, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks Excellent. so much. All right. Have a good day.